how did I go from biology major to actress? That is the one question I'm asked most frequently. Okay, when I was a kid, yes, I did. I wanted to be an actress. But when I took biology in high school, I was hooked. The biological theories I learned to me were the height of creativity. So I pursued my passion for biology and wherever that would lead me. I had nothing to do with acting while in high school, nor while at Vassar. I was never in a play. I never, I don't think, really saw a play. I wasn't interested in the least, not the least. Then during my senior year, I was at Vassar. Oh no, but I was home for spring break. I was driving around LA and I heard a promo for a sitcom on the radio. They, they'd play their best joke from the show. And I remember hearing in my head, oh God, that's not funny. Oh, they punched that joke too hard. Just throw it away. Lisa, remember to throw it away when you do it. I, why do I need to remember to throw a joke away? I don't need to remember that. So I dismissed it until after I graduated and was happily doing research with my father at the headache clinic. And it happened again and again and again. I'd be watching a sitcom and I'd hear myself saying, oh God, no, don't do that. Don't do that comedy walk thing like those sitcom actresses do. <sighs> yeah, it really got relentless. So I entertained the idea of being an actress, then moved to justify the idea with, you know, you're 22, you have no mortgage, no husband and kids, no responsibilities. You have to do this acting thing now, right now. I'm so sorry, but you have to. By November of 1985, I declared that I would pursue acting. I was a little terrified. And not because I didn't think it wouldn't work, I didn't think it would work out. I, I was weirdly confident <laughs> for no reason at all. But <laughs> it was because this didn't exactly feel like it was a choice as much as succumbing to a compulsion. And I didn't analyze what led me to this point, whether it was divine intervention or a lapse in judgment or sanity. I just listened to that inner voice. Over the next eight years, my resolve and commitment was steadily challenged, challenged by casting directors telling me to my face that I was horrible, agents letting me know, it's hard, we don't know what to do with you. They want gorgeous on TV, you know? There's no place for you, really. <laughs> Finally, I got a coveted spot in the main... That was my agent, by the way. <laughs> Just to, so it hits home. <laughs> After many auditions... I was the second person cast in the pilot called Friends Like Us, which would later be changed to Friends. Jim Burroughs also directed this pilot and the first 10 episodes of Friends. One day, the six of us were talking with Jimmy, exchanging the time I got fired stories, and Jimmy told them mine. <laughs> well, she's got the worst one of all. She got, she got fired from Frasier. <laughs> You were right for the part, darling. Thanks. Well, it's a good thing you got fired or you wouldn't have been on this show. He was right. And it was a good thing I didn't get Saturday Night Live. And that Romy and Michelle, that that pilot didn't work out. And every other disappointment that happened. They were actually more like guideposts that kept me on my path. Oh, and after I got fired from Fra Frasier, I went to a birthday party, and feeling like I had nothing at all to lose, I flirted with a guy who was way out of my league. We dated, and on Thursday, Michelle and I will have been married for 15 years. Yeah, that is the biggest achievement, it is. And we'll celebrate with our remarkable 12-year-old son. So... Thank God I got fired. <laughs> Maybe there is a reason for everything. I think there is.